Welcome, everybody. Welcome to Sonic Perspectives. This is Scott Medina with you, and today we've got Gregory Spotten and Alberto Braven from the Big Big Train. Welcome, guys. Hello. Hi. Hello. Yeah, nice to have you with us. And I'm sure most people who are tuning in here are very familiar with uh, Big Big Train at this point, or at least they are getting acquainted. But we really wanted to uh, talk with both of you today to get a sense of the uh, the veteran BB tier and then the the newer blood. And uh, <laughs> even though you're not even so new anymore, are you, Alberto? How long have you officially been in the band at this oh, point? Well well, I think it's uh, it's more than two years. Remarkable. I think it's. Yeah, I think it's two years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah it is. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we we <laughs> we've done a lot of stuff. <laughs> you have. Yeah, you guys yeah. have probably done more live shows than you know most of uh, Big Big Train uh, previously already. It's. Well, that's true, actually, right? It, it is true. Yeah, I think we. I mean, certainly the tour we did last year was. Um, so in big retrain terms, it was completely epic. I think the longest tour we've done before that was six shows. So it was how many did we do? I'll be seventeen, was it? Seventeen, so yeah. Like, yeah, three times the length, uh, and that's very much the the kind of trajectory of the band that we're doing a lot more touring uh, in this year and probably next, and probably carrying on after that. Hopefully, so yeah. Wonderful to hear. Well, um, well, for the purposes of this interview, let's not jump ahead of ourselves too much here. Um, just want to go back a little bit and start with how Alberto came to be in the band. And um, and even before that, you know, how was it decided that Big Big Train would carry on after that tragedy that had occurred? Uh, so it wasn't it wasn't certain that we'd carry on at all. In fact, it probably was. Um, uh, it took us a long time to to decide whether or not we wanted to to allow the band to continue uh at the time really it was me ndv and ricard and and the the after a few weeks i you know trying to process the the loss of david um you know in my mind i began to think you know we should try to carry the music on if we can um but it was very much a, a question of if 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 ricard or ndv were, were uncertain or not happy then that was it hmm. Um, so we had a Zoom meeting like this um, with our manager as well, and and you know I basically sat there and and you know thought is this is the band carrying on or or is it over? Um, but we all felt that we had all alongside David we all put our heart and souls into into Big Big Train music. Um, NDB started working with the band in two thousand and seven, so he's been around for a long time, uh, and Ricard not that long after. So you know it's been a long a long road for us. Um, and, you know, we were also aware that it would help keep David's memory going if the band continued. So we decided to look for a, a new singer. And um, right. So I, I've been for many years, I've been thinking about doing a solo album. And um, I, my habit was if I went to a gig and liked the, the sound of somebody, I would just keep a note of their name on my phone for this potential solo album. And I happened to go to a PFM show in 2015 uh we think it was and um i didn't really know the lineup at the time obviously i loved the the uh, 70s albums i think per and amico was uh is one of the greatest prog albums of all time so I, it was kind of a nostalgia thing really for me really but there was this guy stood at the back of the stage with um with short hair i think at the time um playing keyboards and singing the more difficult song so franz the drummer would come and sing the technically not so not so tricky songs but this guy at the back of the stage uh was just singing the you know the really difficult stuff and i was completely blown away you know i just thought wow this guy's really talented so i didn't write his name down because i didn't know what his name was at the time but um <laughs> i just <laughs> i just wrote pfm keyboard vocal guy um i went home and obviously searched searched his name and and found it was so at the top of my the list of people I wanted to work with as a solo artist was Alberto Bravin. Um, so I, I thought, well, you know, if we're looking for a new singer, then he's going to be the first person that I contact. Um, so I sent him a, a complete, well, it took me a while to track him down on the internet because his social media profile wasn't huge at the time. Uh, it's not <laughs> it's something he's getting used to doing. 
Uh, and I sent him an email out of the blue. And I, honestly, the, the email was like, have you heard of Big Big Train? It was that sort of yeah, email. It, was, it yeah. wasn't a kind of, please come and audition for us. It was just a sort of phishing email. And I had no, I mean, we haven't really got a huge following in Italy. So I had no idea what response I'd get, if any. Mm. Um, and, uh, you know, an email pops back quite quickly. Yeah, I love you guys, you know, da 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 da, da. Um, So that was then I thought, okay, I've got an opening to ask the question here, whether he'd want to audition. And to cut a long story short, he did. And, and um, you know, that we auditioned a lot of people. Um, but Alberto was, you know, top of the tree pretty much all the way through and i've told this story before but my the the, the moment when i really realized was when my wife was just overheard the auditions um and she just stopped and said that one <laughs> again not <my> <laughs> name, <laughs> but, um, so she she said oh that one's giving me you know sp spine tingling moment and that that's a big thing for me a singer needs to be able to to make the hand the hair stand up on the back of your neck. That's the thing. You you can have very technical singers, really talented, um, precise singers, but it's the ones that can bring some soul into it and some passion that that, that are the ones that stop you in your tracks and make your songs come alive. So that was it. We invited him into the band, and um, maybe foolishly for him, I don't know, because he had a great. <laughs> <laughs> he. Um, he he accepted the gig, so and here we yeah, are. Absolutely, that was yeah. the moment, huh? Wow, that that's really interesting and and great. I love the hair standing up uh, test to yeah. be oh, it. totally. Um, <laughs> yeah. and initially, when you when you had a list and you said you auditioned quite a few people, were were you open to any kind of vocal style? Like you know, I mean, I could probably think of a, a few singers who sound generally in the range of David. And so I was curious if you were going to go to someone who, you know, sounded more or less like that range. And, and, but interestingly with Al Alberto, I, I'm hearing more of like uh, Nick and NDV's range. Like a lot of times I'm listening to the album. <laughs> I'm like, like uh, the last 11, I was sure that was Nick singing the first verse. And um, well, we, 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 we were both singing there. Okay. All right. So that, <laughs> all right. That's well, the trick. That well, was... actually, that yeah, that's the trick. Actually, well, it 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 was a it was like um, we actually chose to do that actually, like in a sort of like in a production uh, uh, situation because that was the last eleven, uh, like in the demo, the, it was it was really the first. Uh, the first thing with my voice on mm -hmm. so um, it was like uh, I think uh, it was like a choice to to say all right well this is well the the vocal line was like harmonized so it was obvious to ask Nick to do that but yeah. then when when we we were deciding about all right how we mix this like how we do it and I, I think we uh, everybody agreed about all right let's do it like like a, like a choir like we're we're singing really together there's no like lead vocals in an harmony but it's just two people singing and then i am alone just on the chorus yeah so first yeah. impression you press play it's not like boom oh another singer it it, it was like all right it's a, it's the band singing together and this is yeah. it, it was like a it was like it it was like a more um soft um soft decision at the time introduction yeah. yeah yeah an introduction yeah, yeah so and it was with nick i mean it was yeah. cool there you go yeah. <laughs> for me for, for me to sing with him yeah of course but but then interestingly enough with when the album comes out so the opening track Boom! Yeah. It's just you. I mean, instantly. Well, it's it's like um, <laughs> I, like was that? There's no beating around the bush. You know, this is our new singer. And was that meant intentionally as like a proclamation of the new album? It was. Yeah. I mean, that was quite. It was quite a late decision, really, because that um, yeah, Alby wrote the the bit after that, the sort of four or five minutes of instrumental section. That was broadly his work. Um, and I was just kind of on one of my walks one day and I had I had this little section of music it was just 12 string guitar and, and Alberto and um in my mind I could feel actually maybe we can segue this and make something where the vocal I just I just thought it'd be a bit 
it, it, nice to hear Alberta right at the top of the album rather than, you know, like a classic sort of prog rock five or six minute overture, which is what it goes on to become. Yeah. So I think but it I was think a, it was a ghost rock at the beginning. It yeah, like it was. It was. Yeah, to it was be going to be like a hidden thing at, at the, the end, end of the album, and um, and then so we thought actually if we just bring it forward and change the key, <laughs> and then of course what you get is Alberto twelve guitar, which is a classic sort of big trained sound. Then the brass band comes in, so I think people probably then feel oh hang on a minute, uh, you know there's a mixture of the new and the old here, which is you know we're not trying to completely reinvent the band. You know we've got we have a new singer. We have some new band members, but you know we have to have the the big betraying DNA in there. So then there's the familiarity of the brass band, and the, and you know Alberta very cleverly wrote the uh, the overture to pick up some of the album themes. So it sounds quite classic, sort of big big train. Uh, so I, I'm it's a good for me. It's a really good way to start the album with them um, with Albie up front. Now this is this is really ironic though because for people who haven't heard the album yet, so this opening track it's largely an instrumental. And what you've just told me is that Alberto wrote most of the instrumental part and Greg <laughs> wrote the vocal part that Alberto yeah, yeah. was singing. Yes. And so here, <laughs> here we're all waiting to hear the new singer. Uh, and so it's really <laughs> ironic that, no, he wrote the inst five minutes of yeah, instrumental yeah, yeah. music, which is but fantastic I mean, instrumental well, music. It's a good point, because I, I mean, the thing is, I mean, I, I could see at the PFM show that Alberto was playing keyboards as well. So I, I knew he was an instrumentalist. Um, I didn't know he was a writer. Um, so, you know, when we, when we came to discuss making our first album, you know, that was a conversation I had with him. If you, you know, do you write? Da, 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 da. And to be honest, you know, he was recruited as a singer. So that wasn't, it wasn't necessarily, it wasn't a deal breaker. If you, if Albie had said to me, I don't write. And in no. fact, we've had some, we've had some incredibly good musicians in Big Big Train, Dave Gregory and Danny Manis, who don't really normally write material. So it wouldn't have been a surprise to me at all. Um, so yeah, but you know, I he can do. You know, the thing is, he's a multi instrumentalist, so he can play guitar and play keyboards. So that the instrumental side of things is not a, it, you know, it, it comes naturally to him as much as the singing does. Um, and I have to, unfortunately, he has to hear my melody lines demoed by me, <laughs> and I'm not. This is the closest yeah, I'm good, allowed actually. to the microphone normally. Um, so in and in fact, when I first sent the demos to him with my vocals, I was like. Sorry, Albie, you're really gonna have to get used to this because <laughs> I can't sing, and you just need to hear the melody as I can present it. And he, bless him, he was, you know, he was just like, yeah, this is cool, I can work with this, and uh, and then it comes back sounding proper. <laughs> yeah. Well, so on the new album, the majority of the songs are written by the two of you, either just Greg alone or the two of you uh, collaborating, and. That really struck me when I saw that. Again, you know, not expected like you uh, originally, Greg, just not knowing if if Alberto writes or not, and then seeing, whoa, not only does he write, he wrote the majority of this album uh, in collaboration. And so, for you, Alberto, was was this kind of material, or some of these songs were they just hanging around for you for a while, or was it the uh, these songs were written after you got the gig with BBT in mind? Mm -hmm. Well, it was uh, it was both actually. Uh, there is like well, the instrumental part was written, of course, after after all the songs. So we had like all the demos of the songs, and and we just we were talking uh, about like we are missing something. Uh, um, maybe we have to put something else in the album, and it, why not an an overture, an instrumental overture that would. It would be a nice idea and so <laughs> i had to do it <laughs> so so that so that Welcome. was that was that well that was really fun and it, and it, it, it it's weird well maybe maybe everybody that wrote the old like is writing over to us uh uh done this but it, you you start from a weird point like i started from the end and then go. I went backward to the to the beginning of the of the. So it was weird. So um, uh, that one and Miramare was was the other song that I wrote specifically for the album. Uh, but then, like "Love Is the Love Is the Light," was it was like a song that I had there, uh, hanging. Like it was not a long time before I joined the band, but it was in uh, like a 
really like like a little bit before before that and and uh it was like a completely different arrangement oh. uh the verses and the chorus were there and the hook the whoa, whoa, whoa was there hmm. uh but the arrangement was different there was no instrumental part there was nothing so i had the that that song and um i uh when when me and greg were we were talking about doing something together for the album i said i have this song maybe maybe there is something there and and i i i i i did like um i made like a stripped down version it was just piano and vocals and mellotron and i i just sent him sent it to to greg and and he said oh okay we i think we can do something <laughs> and and so then i uh, i arrange it in a big big train way a little bit more yeah. uh, with the 12 string guitar and the other mellotrons and stuff i add the, the the middle eight part and and so and it just became a a, a proper big big train song it's not yeah. it's not the usual big big train song because it's, it's quite a simple song actually mm. but i think it, it got the vibe and and in yeah. in the album all the all the songs were really uh i think we 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 chose the, the the songs because they were blending together in in the in the entire album so that was the 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 the, the reason of the of the songs of the set list of the album well, i'm glad you brought it to the band because that's one of my favorite songs on the album it's <laughs> all right <laughs> thanks su such a beautiful song um really well done almost almost anthemic you know it's got that mm. really yeah gorgeous chorus and um and you mentioned 12 string guitar now there there is a lot of 12 string guitar on this album especially acoustic of course and i <laughs> I, I think like five of you there's five musicians credited with 12 string guitar on this album <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, well actually yeah actually because ndv played too yeah, yeah the, he did 12 yeah. string like the strum and yeah because yeah, yeah. there was because there was no no one was around in the studio <laughs> and he said i can play that I'll and do he it. just went, and you play yeah but well we know we know that andy and he's uh, of course he's got a good everything sense of rhythm yeah i mean my, oh, my yeah. strumming my strumming is a bit basic i'm better at picking but um yeah he's like oh yeah let me do that dude and um so that was cool yeah but i you know we i'm a, i'm a huge as everybody knows i'm a huge anthony phillips and mike rutherford fan so i love that 12 string thing it, it brings a very rich sound um and so you know i'm i'm really pleased that alberto is sort of sensitive to that sort of sound as well so yeah we we you know and again it's it's something that is rooted in big big trains world so we'll never not use 12 string guitars we'll ever i mean don't you know don't get me wrong we're never we're, we're not we're not going to make five albums in a row where everything is mellotrons and 12 strings and bass pedals you know a lot of it will With be your but, you know. your last email was was saying was, this, was along so. those lines yeah but we're, we're, <laughs> <laughs> was insisting on that yeah um, but we'll you know that there, there'll be we're always going to have that sort of progressive rock uh, kind of 70s sound as part of our sound world but mm -hmm. we're also open to you know developing things and moving things in a different direction um so yeah it's i think it's important to be anchored well, I think you can do, you can do two different things here. You can be one of those artists, maybe like David Bowie or something, that would just do something completely different. Da, 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 and you either go with it or you don't go with it. And some of his stuff I absolutely love, and some of it, funny enough, the stuff with mellotrons and piano and twelve strings I really love, and some of it, uh, it it just kind of leaves me slightly cold. So there's that kind of artist, and then there's artists that I think can stay anchored in what their what their sound is, their core sound, what they're great at, but also allow things to drift and do different things and i think that's how i see the band evolving going forward but i think for this album we very much needed to be on well well we needed we needed to make the best album that we possibly could at this point in time and secondly we you know personally i wanted it and alberto was the same it needed to sound with all with the new voice it needed to sound uh you know like sort of um you know in our pocket really in the pocket yeah. of big train yeah so when we hear the twelve string arpeggiating in in the beginning of a lot of the songs is that usually you, Greg, or is it split amongst who it is? Uh, a lot of a lot of it's me, yeah. A lot of it's me. Um, uh, sometimes, yeah. I think probably at the top of Beneath the Mars, and we recorded um, bookmarks 
together at, at the same time. So Albie was on piano and I was in a little booth on 12 strings. Yeah. So we kind of did that sort of eyeballing each other and trying to get the timing right because there's no click track or anything. It was just like, you know, I was watching his fingers go on the piano. So the album was recorded very old, in a very old school way with us doing it together, which was a great thing to do. Really loved that. Um, and it does bring, I think it brings, you know, the songs are, there's some intimate, personal, I think quite moving moments on the album. And I think the fact that we were creating things together in, in that kind of, you know, as a band entity was really important. Um, and, you know, Bookmarks is a great example where I'd written a song with the harmonies in a certain way and, and Alberto wrote a piano part for it that really changed things. You know, I, it wasn't just like accompanying my chords. It took the chords in a different way. And in fact, when you first, you know, I, I'm not sure, you, you were not sure about it because it really did evolve the harmony and made it a lot more complex, actually. But I loved it, you know. So it's been a, a real you know personally i've been through an absolutely devastating time losing david um you know who was who was one of my best friends and and you know my bandmate um but i but i've you know it's in, it's what i've tried to draw from that is that you try to just live every day to the full and make the most of what you what you the time you have the light left in the day all of that and i've been absolutely blessed that this man has come into my life and you know been prepared to work with me and um you know uh, form this sort of relationship of, of you know strong songwriting i think and and also kind of um it's a good relationship because he can bring things to my material that i can't and i hope i can do the same going back so you know we've done a lot of co-writing and, and i hope that i'm sure that will continue because uh, i think we've found something good here the results are there yeah can't deny it <laughs> I mean, this really is such an incredibly strong album, and and it needed to be right at this juncture. It did, um, yeah. I we we couldn't, you know, we like like most bands during the COVID era, it was just like, you know, all our tours were cancelled. It was like just do something, you know. The management was saying just you know do something, and so we were just kind of grabbing songs and all that stuff and just trying to make albums. And you know, there's some good material on the two albums that we made in that period, but I don't. They weren't crafted. I'm not criticizing those albums, but they just we were just desperately trying to stay busy and they weren't crafted in the way that this one was. And and I think we all instinctively knew in the band this is this has to be us at the top of our game here. Um and you know, if it, if it's not, then there's no point in us carrying on really. You know, we we have to really show our best face to the world because of what's happened to us. And so that's why as Albi as as Beto said, we had I think we had something like two hours of material to choose from. So it oh, wasn't yeah. like yeah, and it wasn't necessarily the case that we chose, you know, the hour or so of the very best songs necessarily. Some of the individual songs that we didn't choose are really strong, but they didn't fit as well together, you know, and this album needs to be one of those albums that is a, is a journey and, um, you know, that you put the record on and you want to finish it, the album off because it, it just pulls you in, which is why the overture is important, I think, because it sets out the themes uh, that we deploy later on in the album. Well, the band has a history of of releasing kind of companion albums. Um, yeah. And so, again, you just said you've recorded two hours worth of material. So is is the next album already pretty much planned or even partly no, recorded? No. Or? Well, in fact, we, we, we've written, we had to, we've written two hours of material, but, but we didn't record. We only recorded what, you know, what we'd chosen for this album because we're all in the studio yeah. together. So it's just like, get, just this is what's going to be. This is what's going to come out. Oh, gotcha. Um, so I think we'll, you know, we'll certainly look at the material that we haven't recorded this time and maybe pick one or two. But, you know, like Ricard's written a sort of 15 minute piece that we're looking at and, you know, we're <laughs> start, we started yes. work on it, just early work. Um, but it will, it won't be, it'll be, it'll be, it'll be new. You know, it, I, I'm, it's hmm. not, it won't be leftovers or reheats. If there's anything that we choose from those songs, it will be songs that fit with the new songs that we will write for the next album. Nice. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Also, also, I think I think maybe something that was meant to be on this album, maybe it, for the for the future albums, and 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 we can write totally new stuff for for the next one. It's weird. Yeah. It's weird talking about that, of course, because we are just promoting. 
<laughs> that album we are already like we are touring and now we are doing yeah we have to write new stuff so of course is it it's like this. <laughs> well tell us a little so bit we... of the uh stories behind this album um like beneath the masks for example which which is the epic on, on this album T tell us a little bit what's behind that i know you two wrote that uh with nick right yeah yeah so i i, I um I, uh, I just shot not long after David passed away, my my stepfather became terminally ill. So I was <clears throat> dealing with quite a lot of um, a lot of grief and a lot of um, uh, difficulties. Um, and I live about 170 miles away from from my my parents, um, which in American terms isn't very far, but in English terms is like a you know a long way away. Yeah. So I was having to drive up to 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 be with my mom and to to help sort of her cope with um uh, my stepfather dying um and it was i live on the south coast of england so it was me going home to the midlands effectively um and uh so i had when i was growing up there were two very large what we call transmitter masts i don't know i, I don't know what you know whether you guys have the same things in italy and, and the united states but just huge 500 feet high uh yeah, yeah. television masts that transmit to you know hundreds of square miles mm -hmm. and these things just were you know they just seemed to be the backdrop to my childhood really and um when i was when my stepfather was in the hospice um where he passed away that was underneath one of these two masts so i was driving past these masts so I, my whole kind of mindset began to think about you know my younger days and that i was returning home but it was almost almost returning home for the last time you know more or less i still got some friends in the midlands but it did feel that way so that was the kind of metaphor that i was running with these kind of masts being at the center of um my kind of young days and and these masts have got a huge guide wires that tether them to the ground and it felt metaphorically that they were all just pinging up and i was losing my 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 sort of groundings really mm. um so that's what i was writing about lyrically musically i wrote actually strange enough i wrote most of it in rome of all places um uh you know we my wife and i were away for a couple of months um and uh we uh yeah i just bought like a cheap 12 string guitar and was just sort of sitting there in the evening sort of writing this thing and i had no idea what i was coming up with really we knew because we'd had the conversations that we were missing something on the album um and so that's what i was kind of tasked to try and put together um and i also had a, a section of music from ndv that i wanted to incorporate within it so to cut long story short Bought this unwieldy it turned out to be 17 minutes long and i had i was only writing onto an iphone so i had no idea what i was dealing with here it's like grasp grappling with this big sort of unwieldy thing um so and then then alberta got involved and really took some of the sections up several levels really because it was just <laughs> it was sketched out ideas on a 12 string um and yeah so it's a it's a it's a for me i'm very proud of it um it it does speak from the heart again I, there's a bit there's a set i mean i was so when my stepfather passed away it was it was spring and um i i, I didn't want the song to be completely doom and gloom even though it's a sad subject I, I because the only thing you can do when someone passes away is to try to pick yourself up and keep going really so you know, I, the the it's an obvious metaphor, but it really was as he was, you know, as he's passing away. That it, spring was all around us coming out. So in the final section, we've tried to make it uplifting and deliver that sort of, um, you know, that that kind of message that you do have to try and carry on if you can. And it did. You know, we were all kind of um, a little bit um, uh, emotional in the studio when we were recording that. Unquestionably, there was you know, I was sat at the back, kind of. <laughs> a little tearful and then well, Albert yeah. turned around and so was he and Fulvio this kind of chain smoking um, studio guy who's seen just like a million years of um, recording uh, he was even he was kind of a bit sort of caught up with it as well so I, I think you it know, was, it, is, yeah. it is an emotional song and, and all we can do as musical recording artists is to try to convey that in the in the song so that's that's what we tried to do yeah the uh, benefits and pitfalls of recording live in this studio all together as a band right yeah absolutely mm -hmm. yeah 
Yeah. yeah. And then also uh, was Skates On also uh, around the same kind of subject for you? Well, Skates On, it's, uh, it's an old an old thing that um, my parents used to say when I was, you know, when you're kind of, and again, I don't know if you've got a similar idiom in, in the US or in Italy. Um, you know, it's just like, get on with it, get your skates on, come on, we need to go out or whatever. So it's just a little phrase, skates on, which I had in my head for a long time. And um, so obviously with all the things that have happened to me with David and with my stepdad, it was it was very much, okay, get, you know, live life as, as fully as you can. So, you know, it just, I wrote the lyrics around that sort of um, idea. Um, and it was, a, it's kind of, a, it's probably the most sort of xt it's more of an xtc like slightly indie kind of song almost i suppose and it's certainly i think correct me if i'm wrong but i think it's beneath the mask then skates on then miramare is that right yeah that's right um it is, and yeah. i think we needed we needed something is you know pacing an album is really important <clears throat> and we had two big chunks of progressive rock with beneath right. the mask and miramare so we wanted something in there that was a little bit of a breather and um, Albie went all Beach Boys on me and, and um, wrote this incredible <laughs> vocal arrangement, so which good. I had the pleasure of watching more record. Yeah. Uh, a little bit Fiesta. jellyfish. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, jellyfish. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Jellyfish, jellyfish a little bit, yeah. Fantastic yeah. band. Um, That's why so I like that, that song so much. That right. was fun. Oh, yeah, ah, it's beautiful, yeah. It was, <laughs> it was actually, when I, when I first heard it, I remember that, that I had this, like I, I don't know why because I maybe I, I just tried some vocals, some vocal harmonies or something, and it was like, oh, this is really Beach Boys. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know if 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 Greg will like it. I don't know. <laughs> it was weird because it was really different from the demo when when, oh, yeah. when I added the, the the vocal harmonies and yeah and and stuff. So yeah, but it it I, it's one of my favorite actually. Yeah. yeah, it's different. You know, I think, as I say, it, it's important to have if, if an album's just 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 epic tracks, you end up with maybe Tales from Tropic Africa Oceans, you know, and, and, and I love I love that album. But I think it might have been stronger if they'd have had a couple of shorter pieces in there just to kind of leave in the, you know, leave in the feast or something. Yeah. Um, yeah. So and that's what you try to do with with shorter pieces uh, and with getting the pacing of the album right and all that. Yeah, and then the next one, Miramare. I mean, I can almost say every track is my favorite on the album, and, and that's certainly <laughs> that's certainly one of them. Again, um, to tell us a little bit about how that one developed and what's behind that. Well, well, uh, that that song, uh, as I said, I I wrote it for the album, having the album in mind. So um, I wrote the all the instrumental demo of the, of the song, and then I I just uh, I just sang on it just just in like broken english or fake english like just just having just putting some melodies on on that and with the harmonies and stuff and then i i said i i asked greg i said why do you want to do you want to write the lyrics on the vocal lines that i that i did and that was like an idea we 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 never done it so it it was like the first experiment on, on on that and um and so we were thinking like what we were talking about and i had this um miramara the miramara castle is a is a is a castle that is here in my city in trieste and it's like a, one of the symbols of the of the city and uh, and the story behind it it is it, it is like a, a like a like a sort of childhood uh, story that everybody that is, uh, is is born here, everybody knows the 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 the, the story about it. But mm. of course, when I I told Greg, Greg was like went full on on the Habsburg story and uh, <laughs> and 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 bought like four or five books about it yeah. <laughs> uh, to, to write to write that 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 lyrics that are incredible and uh and actually uh, like all the album th this album th this is the the only song uh, that it's like a little bit more about history like an, an, an history fact right uh but actually it's it is per because all the album like the overall album it's really personal it it's about 
uh, personal uh, uh, situations or memories or feelings or or, or whatever. And and th this one, it's the the only one that it's talking about and and is like a uh, an historical fact. But actually, it is personal because it is about one of my of the symbol of my town. So uh, okay. it, it is still still a little bit personal so that's yeah really nice yeah that, that's really yeah. nice to bring that in too yeah so the uh the phrase the likes of us which is the name of the album are in the lyrics from the last 11. uh how did you come to decide to use that as as the album title well it's a, the likes of us is a phrase probably from maybe 60s or 70s um england and it's a, it's a self-deprecating phrase so basically uh it, its usage in english is oh that's too posh for us that's not for the likes of us you know right um mm -hmm. so i quite like that self-deprecating english people do like kind of self-deprecating stuff um i think americans particularly are a bit more gung-ho well, these are the these are the you know stereotypes so forgive me if that's wrong <laughs> no, it, Italians it talk with their hands a lot and unfortunately that's exactly what I'm doing I've obviously caught that from Alberto <laughs> yeah you um, are yeah I know Good I know job. but um so you know I think we were just looking whenever you're looking for an album title you 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 know you you try and think of a or come up with phrases that sum up what we're trying to be and I thought it was interesting you know we've just been signed to Inside Out we've never really had a proper big record label before so that was new for us that was well that's not for the likes of us but more importantly as alberto said the songs are very personal and, and even miramare is a local story um you know and, and, a, and a love affair at the, at the heart of it so I, I thought as much as anything it, it it's kind of a double meaning really because the the likes of us is, is this album is about us you know it's about the likes of us and that incorporates our fans and the people that want to listen to us etc um so that's why and we just i think we banged a few ideas around and that one was the one that really stuck um you know for us yeah. it seemed to just speak of the of the album for, for us so i'm really you know it's maybe not a very proggy album title I mean, normally things are a bit more sci-fi or whatever but it, it <laughs> i think it's just i i like the the humble nature of it i really it it, it, it appeals to me very much yeah as, as prog fans you know grammy awards are just aren't for the likes of us i guess that that's well, how that's you... it exactly that's, <laughs> that's exactly it, yeah. right yeah exactly <laughs> although i think Good, I, of... I got it thank, thank yeah. you for that lesson there <laughs> <laughs> uh and, and speaking of america you guys are coming over and and we're so excited um you know obviously we were devastated uh four years ago when that fell through and then uh everything that followed but um finally you're coming you've got dates in in the states and then you're going going on a big big ship and um, well, yeah yeah so what what <laughs> are uh for both of you what what's your biggest hope or expectation of bringing big big train to america and on the cruise well it's it's the first time for big big train there so i mean uh, i i think it it will be it, it is always uh i had the I, I was i was lucky to 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 go around the world with pfm and and see the different uh, audience in the in the different countries how they react to particular song or particular sound or whatever and it, and it it is really weird because you have like in a, 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 a I don't know in, in America we I remember that everybody PFM had like the uh the the English versions of the of the songs yeah like in the 70s they they did like I, the English yeah. versions and yeah. the Italian version of course yes. and everybody wanted the Italian versions <laughs> they didn't want and we we were prepared to play all right we have finally we can do the english version of the song and we were playing there and everybody was saying, no 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 we want the italian version like the promoters say no 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 play the italian version so uh -huh. <laughs> it was so weird okay all right and um so every country has like a really different uh, reaction to different things so mm -hmm. we played uk and we played the europe on the last tour and there was like a reaction, like a, it was like a sort of a, of a path 
I, I think I think there was like a couple of songs that really, really went really well, like in in every gig. Mm. So I mean, it, it, it what I'm really curious about is how mm. how the American audience will react to some of the songs. Yeah, and so so that it's that it's uh, that it's quite quite uh, fun to 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 see how how it will how it will go. So yeah, and the and the set list will be probably different, right? Because now the new album will have been released, yeah. and so are you going to play the bulk yeah. of the new album? Well, no. Well, when when not all well, actually, all we, we probably shouldn't be giving too many spoilers away here. But I, I, we don't. We're not going to do um uh, a kind of. Uh, I mean, this is the first time in the states, as Albie said. So I think we want to deliver some Bibi Train, you know, some of our best Plastics. material. There, a lot of that, I think, is on the new album. But I think we need to give people some time. I mean, it's literally, as you said, Fort Wayne is like the day of album release. So I think for us to hit them with sixty minutes of new stuff would probably not be that clever. Um, so I think we're going to move move debuting a lot of the new songs till sort of later in the year. Um, you know, we we just I think we we owe it to listeners over there to to play some stuff that's of course they've not heard before because we've never played there before but some stuff that they may be more familiar with i think mm -hmm. so we had a you know we've had lots of conversations about set lists basically i bet yeah oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> well there is a lot of songs i mean and 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 you you, you can play all the songs so no. it's the set list thing it's one of the the most difficult things to do for for gigs because it's really difficult and uh we all we i mean we, we always try to also in the europe in the in the last tour to make like different set lists for like sort of every gig there, mm. it, it was different or like a shuffling yeah. set list yeah. or some songs we played it like in 17 shows we played it like three times yeah so and some people are happy some people <laughs> <laughs> are not <laughs> of course but i mean you 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 try to to just give the, the the thing of the live situation i think it's that it has to be an experience like a single experience for people that it, that it's there and see the show watch the show and it it has to be like a just that day that night yeah it it's that night and then yeah. you do another night and it's different and people yeah. will talk about oh you played that song oh and they they didn't play it on my show i mean yeah. you had your show <laughs> 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 i mean it's yeah i mean it's what i like if i go to see like like a gig i i i like to to see something really different or different version or i don't know something special or mistakes uh, I mean, I mean, why not? Yeah, it is the it is the live it it is the live risk and it's the live yeah yeah beauty a, I think yeah it's a high bar, isn't it? Right, Greg, any any um, hopes for what might come out of this uh, tour? Well, I think I, I we're just dipping dipping our toes in. It's a fairly contained tour to start with. You know, it's a big financial exposure for any band to come from Europe to the states. Uh, obviously, we've got the cruise, which is kind of um, quite frankly bankrolling us for much of it um the cruise i'm really looking forward to because i've never done the cruise you know and and um you know alberto has and ricard has and ndv has and they all just think it's great so you know i'm um yes. i'm looking forward to that um but i'm you know i'm really just looking forward to well one of the things we do uh after most shows or almost all shows is come out and meet people and talk to people um now we may not do that if someone's feeling a bit unwell or whatever and needs to sort of protect their you know their voice or whatever but generally we'll come out and meet people and that's the nicest thing because you yeah. connect with the or you connect with the audience when you're playing to them and you know there's nothing better than looking out into an auditorium and seeing people singing along or crying or whatever you know all the things that you want the band to do for somebody and then you meet them afterwards and then you've got that connection and then they talk about you and the audience grows organically which is how it used to be and and um that's what we're going to try and do is just you know we're there to to play to people and to help to try and build the audience so that we can come back more often brilliant all right we would love that um yeah and you'll definitely get that a lot on the cruise because i mean you won't be able to escape it uh, <laughs> <No>. that connecting <laughs> yeah, okay <laughs> 
yeah, just there is jump that. on the ocean. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, 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 the cru- the cru- the cruise is fantastic. It's it's fantastic. I mean, it it is it is beautiful to to just hang around, like hanging with the people, and also with I mean, with with your heroes because you we are yeah. we are there with people that are actually people that we are admire or 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 we follow and yeah. and and so that it, it's it's it is it will be a great great experience i think absolutely well i'll be on there on the ship with you guys so i'm really all oh, right excellent good yeah. good yeah it's gonna be fantastic cool. absolutely so um thank you both so much for taking some time and talking about it and of course yeah. all everyone who's listening um this will be released before the album comes out, but there, there's a lot of uh, singles or tracks already off the album. They can get used to it and and get it in, in their blood. And uh, definitely the beginning of March, I mean, it's going to be unforgettable. I think every big, big train fan is going to be very happy uh, about this. So thanks for bringing a little more insight about it for us. Cool. Good to talk to you, Scott. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Hang on for just a moment. And um, thanks, everyone, so much for for listening to Sonic Perspectives. And uh, keep following us for more interviews, reviews, and uh, live news coming your way. All right. Cheers.